Hi, good morning, and welcome to Monday Minutes with Kelly and Jesse. I'm Jesse. And I'm Kelly. And today we're going to share a short tutorial video on how to import patrons into the Koha system with a file, a CSV file. Excellent. Kelly, this is a, usually a pretty hot topic, um, especially um, in the beginning of the school year, um, and then again in the beginning of a spring semester. So this is a great way to allow our users to get a file of patrons into the Koha system. Yeah, absolutely. If no one has done this before, there's a great um, starter file that lives in the patron import tool. So we'll head on over to the tools within Koha and then pick this import patrons. This is one area in Koha. This tool specifically has a lot of directions already living on this page and really important things listed here. And what might seem like a large block of text, um, you can tell right away. It will tell you what the required fields are. So if we go down to those last three bullets, you can see right away branch code, category code are required and must match valid entries in the Koha system. And Kelly and I will show you exactly where to find these codes, but that is imperative and it's so good that it tells you, you know, right there that those are needed. Yep, absolutely. So, um, Koha does give you a nice CSV that has all the columns already created for you and in a comma separated um, file. So let me just click that and show you what it looks like. Just so you can see, it comes to my desktop. Okay, so these Columns are all the fields from your borrower's table in the schema. You do not need to fill out all these fields. Um, some can be blank if you don't want to, but this does give you a nice blank um, canvas to use. And some of our libraries have shared with us that if they are working with like the registrar's office, you can share this CSV file with them so they know exactly what fields they need to populate. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so again, we talked about the mandatory field. So let's remind um, users where to go find those codes that we definitely need to have in this file. So if we go into um, our administration module and click on our uh, libraries tab, that will give us our branch code for each one of our locations. And so it's very important that you use the code um, rather than the name. In some cases you can see in this one, it is the same, um, but in most um, the name will have the entire name of the library written out. So if your name is Kelly and Jesse's Memorial Library, you know, the code might be KJML. Um, so you want to make sure that you're using that code rather than the name. Absolutely. Um, so we created a little test patron import. Let me drag it on over here. It's hiding behind this other screen. Sorry, Jesse. Um, as a kind of import and we set up some information. And um, and that's perfect. And again, patron category was another one that we were talking about, and you can find that information also in administration. So same type of thing. You want to make sure you're using the code again and not the description. But as Kelly mentioned, if you're bringing in all students or let's say you're bringing in all faculty, again, you can just specify that in the fields below and we'll show you that as well. Okay, so there's your code right here. So I'm going to go back over to the tools module and click that patron import and we'll go through what, what are the other options. So again, on the right, there was lots of text. It's really helpful to read through that to make sure your information is set up correctly. And then here on the left hand, you will see where you're going to import the file. Um, I love this new feature, which came a few versions ago that you can actually create a list from your import. So we've worked with a lot of you know, private high schools that want to have a list of this is their seniors because then later you could batch modify them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then you're going to say, if you are overlaying or updating information, you could use which of these fields to match on. So you could say, look for the same username and then update the information or the same card number. And then again, those default values. So if you wanted to say everyone I'm importing is going to have a default value of, there's a lot of fields, so I'm scrolling. Um, they're coming in at this branch code. You can absolutely just do that and not have that in your CSV file. Same as the patron category. So we'll put these, um, this 
import in as libraries. Well, we'll put it in as government. Perfect. Yep. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and load it up. All right, let's load that file. Let's load that file. Um, Another thing while we're waiting for that to upload too is if you do have an error, you know, and for some reason some of your patrons haven't uploaded correctly, on the next page, Koha will give you a, um, like an error message and tell you exactly what has not uploaded. So you'll know right away, like the date format was incorrect or you didn't have the code correctly, mm -hmm. um, you know, labeled in the, in the CSV file. And in my case, I never downloaded the file to my um, computer, so I had to find it first. All right, here we go again. <laughs> here we go again. Here it is. All right. Does anyone else have that problem finding things on their desktop? I certainly do. I certainly do all the time. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create a patron list because um, I love that feature. This is actually brand new patron, so I'm not going to choose to, to match it, so it doesn't matter what field I'm using. I'm going to keep those two default values to say that where everybody that I'm importing is going to have that home library of the BR and that every patron is going to be a government employee. And then a few more details at the very bottom, if you were matching, it would say, what would you like me to do if I find a match? Ignore and keeping the one that's already in Koha or overwrite the one that's in Koha with this new file. And then patron attributes. If you were adding more patron attributes to this file, would you want to replace all or only ones that are included and retaining the ones that are already in there? Perfect. Okay, perfect. Let's go ahead. All right. Yay. Six imported records. Imported Six. records. Perfect. Nice job. <laughs> nice job. The great thing is, is it does give you, it does give you good feedback. If you were to get an error, you can go back and figure it out. But of course, if you want to let us know, we can certainly help you with that. Excellent. Yeah. Well, great job today, Kelly. And hopefully all of our users that are importing patrons for either the beginning of the school year or a new semester have an easier time. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much, Jesse. Have a great day. Thanks, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.